probably knew going into this game that they wanted to turn this into a Tinker game. It's won them games before in this tournament in the past, one of Nana's best. Cole, though, not going for any kind of, like, let's hard counter Tinker, but they've still got heroes that can put a lot of pressure on him. Uh, I think overall Cole's draft is w very well-rounded. It's what we've seen them play a lot of and have great success, success with. The big question for me that's going to kind of determine at least like the potentially the game or at least the early to mid game is how well can Tinker do? Is he going to get roamed on? Yeah. Oh, and Kyle, Kyle actually playing on the Sand King is Whoa. already going to get hit a little bit and well they're going to come out battling and fighting very early on. Kyle getting body blocked with the rockets. Hold oh up. Gosh. Level one from downtown. They find Nana. a kill and Moo also in trouble. Complexity getting ran out at the start. They want more. They're going after Limp. Can they even find more here? Complexity. No stun from Mushi. He hasn't got any clarity, Mango. Oh, man. Maneski Whoa. came out of the gate swinging. Yeah. I'm excited. That's that actually I, I, something I didn't really register at the end of the draft. Is Yeah, Kyle on the Sand King. He has played these like melee initiators in the form of the Earthshaker. I haven't seen a Sand King. It may have had it here or there, but not something I've seen. And I feel like it's not a hero that's going to suit his play style. The Shaker, the Warlock, these are good. He sits back, uses his spells, doesn't have to get right up and close. This could be something a bit dangerous for him when he has to be a lot more aggressive on this. Jabs going for the roll, wants this rune. Gonna be able to find it. Can he get there? No, not quite there. Still some good harass, anything to secure this mid lane. Talked about how well the Tinker can do, and he gets a first blood. Level one heat seeking missiles, not the best for the lane. You wanna have the laser, but if you get a first blood out of it, you're happy with that. Doesn't have to worry about his courier being sniped. Already has the salve, salve couriered out. Really great place for Tinker to be with a first blood. And he's going to need to be that force in this one. Starting off, like you said, gain a, an early good start to it. Z Freak is going to move over here. Where do you expect to see this Chen moving around to uh, in this game as some body blocks onto ice? But couldn't really amount to much unless they're able to have a good creep here. And it's a Centaur, but Barrow Strike into Centaur stun could be some good damage. Uh -huh. Poor Man Shield, he will survive. I don't see this being a kill. Burrow, they do have the long duration stun. Good bit of damage. They can maybe go for some more body blocks. Almost fully wrapped around on, but like you said, the poor man's shield just a bit too yep. much to break through. Yeah, there's, I was talking to Winter. I was like, do you just get, when do you get poor man's shield in the offline? He's like, if you're you're worried about dying at level one, you want poor man's shield. If you think you're going to not die, it's much better to get extra regen, the salve, uh, the mango, so you can go into the soul ring. But this is a prime example of where that poor man's shield pays off. The kill potential at level one, and Ice 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 with the poor man shield does survive. Well, we need to talk at least a little bit about this. It's a silencer played in the core role, not something that's been around all that often. How do you feel like that matchup works out in the mid lane against Tinker? Uh, it's going to be pretty even, slightly Tinker favored with the laser mischance. Uh, Tinker should farm very well, should have an edge. Uh, rotations is the big big thing. Silencer with more kill potential, not to mention the, the Chen rotations are very dangerous. Earth Spirit can roll in. Uh, but unless Tinker wants to go for like a max laser missile build, he should be not not finding kills all too easily. Yeah, um, saw there that rotation. Not really bear fruit. We'll be able to push Nana at least back for the moment. Um, then the other lane that we haven't really talked about a ton, Moo versus the Sven. We talked about a lot in the draft, the potential for a Sven against Nature's Prophet. Yep. A good counter. It is. I, I think it was something Cole were okay with because they have the Bloodseeker. Uh, the lane is going to go very well for the Sven. It's a hero that isn't bothered at all by the tree, and he even goes for the poor man's shield. Mid lane Nana could be in some trouble here. Slowed down. They have the stomp a little bit off the mark, though, and, well, actually still able to find the kill. I was wondering if maybe he just went top there, he would have been fine. He, he went bottom to juke the Centaur stun, but then he tried to run back top, and he got body blocked by the Centaur. So while he, he, he dodged the stun, he, got, he ended up blocking himself a bit. Tried to go back north with the Tango, but yeah, couldn't get through. So nice little gank there. And this is the kill potential I talked about. This is where Silencer, while he's not going to win the straight up 1v1 in terms of CSing, he can get those kills. And that's exactly what he's found to start things off. You don't want to see Silencer gain too many. Those plus twos are going to add up over time. So already at the beginning, relatively even across the lanes, two to one. The roaming potential from the Earth Spirit is something that uh, also is something to be watching yep. out for as he's oh, able he to the find Limp, the stun to follow. Just a little bit outside of range to find that laser. Yeah, he, he didn't run forward for it. Didn't Wouldn't have gotten the kill with it. He could have even leveled up two points in missiles. It still wouldn't have been enough. So I think Nana just said, I'm going to keep getting my creeps. Thanks for the harass. I'm out of here. But I'm not, I'm not wasting my mana, basically. Yeah. So Limp salves up, has raindrops now. So definitely... 
really not much kill potential at all for, for Nana here. He's almost not, not really worth getting that second point in heat seeking, heat seeking missiles. Better to just start leveling the march uh, once you can. But at the same time, level one march is pretty awful. Bottom nice lane, roll. they find themselves Moo, and this should be a kill as they're able to chase him down inside the oh, trees. Is he really he's living? Orb of yeah. Venom. Wow, they didn't want to die for that. Yeah, Ninja Boogie was not close enough for the dual breath and didn't have boots, so couldn't get in there. And that is a uh, good escape. All right. Maybe if he'd just gone for the, the liquid fire instead, would have been able to get a right click off, but... Still okay, Sven free farming. A kill would have been nice for sure for Mineski, but the problem is now Moo just TPs right back in. Oh, four minutes. Limp is just getting surrounded on right now, but with the Chen coming in as well, they might be able to find a return kill here. They're even summoning the Cyclone, and Kyle with the Burrow, they have enough damage, they find a return kill. Yeah, it looks like Tinker did spend his money and buy his boots before he died, so doesn't lose any money out of that. Doesn't lose any int because Silencer died, so... I'd say slight win for Mineski there, but not the, the biggest one. Pretty even trade all in all. Overall, Cole are uh, having a, a better laning stage though. Another, Another roll. roll in bottom. Oh, able to sprout the Mushi Sven for a minute, and that actually gives him a little bit of separation. Yep. You know, you'd mentioned when we were getting ready to come down here that you felt like the winner of this game was going to be the team that went out and battled more. Do you feel still feel like that's kind of the case in this one? Um, a little bit. I think we've seen both teams willing to go for a lot of early movements, rotation. We've seen Earth Spirit rolling in mid, doing it multiple times bottom. Kyle's being very active on the sand, can continue to do so here, looking for Ice Ice Ice. Juking in the trees. Yeah. <laughs> I'm he not knows, exactly sure what that was, but that's great. Yeah, he knows if he gets stunned, he can just TP out. So it's uh, very, it's not really a kill you can get. He's even gonna walk past him again. Kind of just playing games a little bit. Typical Ice 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 stuff. Defrick getting some good levels on the Chen. See where he looks good. Normally, we've, we've seen like the Midas Ags build be the popular one, going for that mid-game push. Definitely something with the Nature's Prophet Bloodseeker that can be strong. Oh, again, yeah. bottom lane. Oh, this time they get the kill. Yeah. Very well done. Yeah. The big struggle there is Mushi's gone for this regen build. Ooh, limb. Ooh, roll. Able to get caught. Double burrow. They're going to be slowed coming out of this. Jab's taking the damage from the tower, but we'll be able to switch aggro over on Ice Ice Ice. And Kyle just going to be forced into going for the Sandstorm. And now Moon in trouble as well. Nana's going to end up being brought down. Can he get denied to the troops? No. Actually, no, he does. He Excuse does, yeah. me. All right. Well played. Doesn't get a chance to spend any money before dying. Does have the Soaring queued up, but... Interesting little trade again, not really heavily favoring either team. Mineski do lose two, one is to the neutrals though. There's still a bit of a wait for the Tinker to, to respawn. Again, bottom lane, Moo, he's getting constantly pressured. Ice 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 has had such an active night time. He is moving around all over the place. Moo's going to get he's ran at here. He is going to be able to have the shrine staying alive for the moment. He's Can't like, Mushi, where you at, bro? And there's also going to be the trees leveled out. He's in trouble. He's going to be blocked in, but Ooh. doesn't look like he's going to be brought down. Does he, have a he has a shrine to fall back on. Not sure if Nana wants to use it. It is nighttime. Oh, oh Jabs goes down. Yeah, Ice 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 is going to use the shrine. Probably a good call. Try and get a kill with this last minute of nighttime. But he's on top of a dire ward, so they know he's coming. Well, watching for that. And you can see that they're playing very safe down there in the bottom lane. Yeah. Mushi's build has been interesting. I mean, he is a player known for some very interesting builds that are a bit unorthodox. Going for no, he went for the helm before the boots, which meant getting kills was harder. Didn't have a mango, didn't have any mana regen, which meant he hasn't really had the opportunity to use Stormhammer very much in lane. Normally, you see at least like one clarity on a Sven. Oh, ice, ice, ice. Finding Z Freak here, and well, he's gonna try and give the little bit of the amp damage. Kyle finds a burrow strike, and. Well, some creeps doing some damage. Moo there as well. Able to hit him, but no way out. to break that. Oh, wait. Centaurs Ooh. come in. They find the TP cancel. Z Freak from the grave. <laughs> Able to get a little retribution. Yeah, that was a, a clutch play. Ice 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 trying to make the most out of that last little bit of night time. Three kills during night. Definitely an effective night phase for him. And it's oh, what, you want, what you want to see out of your night stalker. When, even when you're playing the off lane, you want to almost always leave that lane, go mid, go to your safe lane, find some kills. Does free up Chessie to free farm. He's sitting on 57 CS. Top of the CS charts, top of the net worth. A lot of the Sven's farm has come from the Treants. Yes. 
So as far as night times go, you said he's very active, able to get a lot done. Uh, now that it's transitioned to day, how do you see the next couple minutes working out for both teams? Should be really good for Cole. They're going to make moves. Uh, Kyle's already kind of playing aggressively. He is by himself, so he can't do a whole lot with this. But looking to stop some of Nana's jungle farming, it seems. This, the Centaurs from Chen. Well, they're in there. It's doing some damage. The Pearl Strike on it too. Is he really going to find this? Global comes out there bringing in Moo. Nowhere left to go. They take the kill onto the Tinker. Z Freak, what a god. That was some insane positioning from his Centaurs. Double stun chained perfectly to get Kyle in there and then the TP from Profit to finish it off. That was. That's such a big kill. This this Tinker item timing is the, the crucial deciding factor for Mineski this game. Getting the boots to travel up. Uh, at a decent time, and then the Blink Dagger. Roll forward, they find Z-Freak, but the tower is already gone. And now the Burrow Strike onto the Night Stalker. Damage a little bit split up here. Complexity kind of spread. Z-Freak getting ran at. He has some creeps to try and body block Mushi, but it's still going to be a kill onto Z-Freak. That should be the extent of it, though. As they <laughs> get the deny on the Centaur as well. Yeah. Peek a little play. Cole are definitely the ones setting the tempo. They're the ones applying a lot more pressure, moving around the map, and they're doing so with just four heroes. Chessie has been allowed to just free farm the top lane, and he's done so while taking the tower. So they created tons of space for him. Mushi's been under a bit of pressure, has farmed okay, going for a fast armlet build of all things, something we haven't seen on Sven in, I feel like, uh, some time, at least not by most players who are playing this hero. So he's freed up the lane, though, giving Ninja Boogie some levels on the Jakiro. Tinker Sven just kind of sharing the jungle and giving supports uh, some much-needed farm and experience. A hero like Jakiro can really benefit from that because you want this Jakiro to be able to push out lanes, get something like Macropire online early. Oh, oh man. What a time for this smoke. If they're able to find Mushi they're right now, the they're around. moving in. Kyle is there. Do they spot him? Yes, they do. Burrow Strike's going to come out. He ends up finding him. Epicenter as well. The stun, it's not going to be enough. Mushi drops. They're able to take away a couple of those creeps as well, and Ice 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 shows up come to the wrong neighborhood, but he will be able to escape. They're going to steal these ancients. Limp is here as well, trying to find this kill. They are going to be able to catch the Night Stalker. Complexity are just rolling Mineski right now. Yep. They finished off the last couple big ancients. Then they also proceed to block the ancients. So no more easy farm for the Sven. Such a good time to go for that smoke play. They didn't even have vision of the ancients when they when they led, led it. They had visions of the, the neutrals further to the right side. They just made a guess. They saw a Jakiro farming bottom. They're like, okay. They're farming jungle. Whether we catch the Tinker or the Sven, you don't care. That's a big kill either way. The Tinker, perhaps the bigger kill of the two, but Sven, you're perfectly happy with. And Mushi, right back to farming to the top lane. Tinker, same thing. This is where Mineski are going to be perhaps playing too slow, very passive. They've got two heroes that want to farm that can't really get involved too much. Tink Tinker needs his boots to travel. Sven needs a Blink Dagger. So the other three heroes, the two supports and Ice 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 on the Night Stalker, there's a ton of pressure for them to actually make plays to create space needed for those carries to farm. Cole with a big advantage because of this. Maybe Kyle Pickoff here oh. would be a big Night benefit. Stalker, is caught in the jungle, like yeah. They are going to be able to Kyle. find him, and well, that's the kill that they needed. Same yeah, time, was, though, it's its position by Sand King for a tower. Yeah, he was just kind of on his own in the jungle. It's still something. You're Tinker and Santa farming while it goes down, so better than nothing, but still not the ideal scenario. Cole overall having the, the win there. Well, all of the Tier 1 towers now taking a 4,000 net worth lead into the favor of Complexity. Ancient's still blocked here. And, well, Chen's going to have a Midas on top of everything else. Yep. It's just feeling very, very good for Complexity. Yeah, and again, Cole's not looking to, to win the game anytime soon. That's why they go this Midas on Chen. It's kind of just to give him some power levels and also get him up to that Aghanim Scepter. And then when he gets the Ags, he wants to have the levels to go with it so we can get potentially two Ancient Creeps with the level 12. And that's where uh, Cole. That's where Cole gets strong. Once the ancient creeps are in play. Oh, the net is it going to be there in time? Not quite. No, no. I need to stomp anyways. A little bit out of range, and Mineski definitely just want to avoid fights. I feel like Mushi's next time will be the blink dagger, but we'll have to wait and see. May consider a, a BKB early on. It's just whether you get the the BKB or the the blink first, really, in my mind. But not many other items that seem all too feasible. Top the Blink lane. is ooh, going in. Yeah, they've got Magnetize here as well. We'll see if they end up deciding to drop oh, it. Well, global. global comes out, and now maybe instead they're going to be able to find a return kill. Jabs, he's able to get away, but Mushi left completely alone. They're bringing all the heroes in for this. Do they have enough damage in time? No. Yeah. Jabs was 
going to chain stun, waited to the, right as the storm hammer was going to wear off to use his stun, but gets globaled, so can't really fault him for not stunning sooner. He was going to get the perfect chain stun, but the global was even better. Limp not particularly farmed. He got pressured a lot this game, but when you look at where the Nature's Prophet and Bloodseeker are on top of the net worth chart, you're not overly worried. Ninja Boogie bottom. Oh, Z Freak's just going to be able to find that kill. They got a little bit of help from Mu as there as he comes in for the last hit. And now a heal, because up top they're going on to Chessie. Unfortunately, they are going to lose the, lose the Bloodseeker there. Yeah, this time they get him. Tinker's boots to travel online too, so he's a lot more mobile, can defend these lanes. That's the one thing. The, the Chen really needs Ancients because they're the ones that aren't going to die to the March of the Machines as much. They're the ones which can also boost up, whether you get a Granite on to boost up the health, the, the Frenzy one to help push push faster. You can put that on here as like the Bloodseeker. So the Ags is very important this game for the Chen. The lane. Night Stalker, they're chasing, they're dealing the damage and limp. Most likely to fall as they've got everything and a bit more on top of that. But the turnaround, Kyle trying to find this kill here with all the Chen creeps as well. They're dealing a good bit of damage. They decide to cancel the TP. He's going to go instead on the other side of the river. They've got him caught. Can they find him killed? It looks like the answer is yes. Mu finds that one. The kick to try and keep Jabs alive. And now they have the ulti out as well. Z Freak not able bit. to catch anybody else. Okay, Jabs will get out, yeah. On top of Slightly better trade from Neski. Two for one, of course. Both mid lanes going down the Tinker more valuable than the Silencer. That's where it's not quite as big of a win for Mineski as it could otherwise have been. Mushi gonna find Chessie, he's in God String form. Oh, they're Chessie. bringing in the Silencer as well. Chessie in a lot of trouble. He gets the blood right off at first, but it's just gonna be a TP away. They got no problem with this at yep. all. Another TP away, no stuns. Yeah, this is where they're, this is where Kyle on the, 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 the Sand King, not gonna criticize him. He is, can't be everywhere. He is the, the TP cancel. We saw the Chen do it with the Centaurs at some points, but Kyle cannot always be there for these kills for the Barra Strike. And also, unlike a hero like Shaker, you've got to get in a lot closer. You mm -hmm. need a Blink Dagger. You're not going to farm one as a five position Sand King. So draft wise, Complexity are suffering for a lack of disables. Something Kyle has been in, in eight of these 10 kills. He's done fantastic, but the rest of the team are just unable to find kills when Kyle's not there. Now, the smoke up from Maneski, that was underneath a ward, so Complexity will understand that this oh, is coming their way, although... Got the Limp, stand, though. Limp wants the trouble. bounty rune. Oh, Limp, you're a madman. All right, well, that's a little bit crazy. We'll see if they end up being able to get away. Global comes out, but far too much damage, so he dies and they lose Global. Yes, and we saw what happened last time. When Global was down, Maneski ran at the mid, killed the Silencer again, so this Global is a big cooldown that... Cole have to be very careful about using. Oh no, and now Mu also, he's gonna get caught. They find the kill, and now maybe he's gonna be able to find Kyle as well. That looks like he's gonna get away, but they, they found the kill on the yeah. NP anyways. Cole were having a great start, a good laning stage, but Mineski are just playing faster tempo, and that's kind of a little bit unexpected considering the Sven and Tinker were looking to farm, but the Tinker got his boots to travel, and this trio, Night Stalker, Earth Spirit, and Jakiro are just smoking up, going for these three-man moves and succeeding. They first found the Sand King in the jungle, now they've, they're they finding the Nature's Prophet there. The Sven found the, the Bloodseeker a couple of times. And when Mushi gets this blink to go with the Mask of Man and Armlet, he's going to be tearing apart these heroes. That's the real scary thing, is thinking about when they all start coming together and really moving around the map as a four or five man unit with Tinker ready to get in there in the moment as well. The best part for Mushi is he doesn't really need the BKB super early. The the counterplay isn't really there. If he jumps on someone with the God Strength Mask of Madness, they're almost always going to die because there's no instant counterplay. If Carl had a Blink Dagger on Sand King, different story. He can Blink Barrow, but he's got to be in range for a Barrow Strike instantly. There's no Earthshaker Fissure. There's no easily like insta disable to deal with that Sven. So he can really wait to get the BKB. Probably gets after the blink, but the fact he can just go for this armlet mask of madness before getting even a BKB is fantastic for Mushi's game. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit of an unorthodox build, but it works in this instance. And he's sitting top of the net worth now and not really looking back either. Again, the vision for Cole, very good. These deep wards on the radiant side of the map. Something they have to try and take advantage of. We'll see if they start giving farm party to the Sand King. That to me is going to be a, a crucial element for them. Problem is Chen's a very greedy hero that wants to farm as well. The Ags is being worked on by Z Freak. You really want to get that Ags around the time where you're strong. You can push and fight. Chessie will have a Radiance on uh, the Bloodseeker at that point, certainly. You want to have the Sand King blink though, because that's your catch. That's your, your pickoff. 
Oh, oh Kyle though. No. Top lane, blink reveal, stun silence. They take him down. I gotta tell you, Parker, this is feeling very scary to me because you're gonna have the blink dagger done for the tinker as well in just a minute. And if they start finding these kills after kills, complexity doesn't really feel like they have an answer for it. Yeah. There's something to be said for Mushi. He is a, a big stage player. Like Kyle jokingly asked him at the start of game one, you nervous? Mushi is a player who does not get nervous. He will show up on the big lads. He'll have a disappointing showing game after game, maybe in some online ones. Not that he necessarily does. He's been playing very well in this Mineski team. But when it comes to like a clutch game three decider, he's the player you want on your team on a core hero. And that's exactly what he's done here. He has found so many kills for his team in unexpected ways, finding this Bloodseeker. You talk about Bloodseeker as the Sven counter, being able to rupture him, lock him down in place, but if Sven's get, jumping the Bloodseeker, stopping him getting off spells, suddenly Sven very good against the Bloodseeker. And we've seen multiple times Mushi find that big kill. Yeah, and he's been the one that has to step up because Tinker was getting in so much priority trying to shut him down early. All those rotations that kept on coming mid. And well, now, they're going to be rewarded. Also, Night Stalker moving around the map, seeing what he can scout and possibly find. Oh, he, he pops, I believe, Kyle smoking with a dire ward right next to him, though. Cold do know what's going on. Problem is, they can't really see too much. Those wards under darkness give very little vision. That was so much of the thing that was the benefit for complexity last game was their ability to keep eyes on all of the Maneski yep. lineup. Not happening this time around. Radiant scan shows where a lot of the call heroes are and Mushi could have looked for a kill this bottom lane but decides it's a bit too unsafe and I feel like Maneski think this top lane may be the better place to go for these kills. See Freak. They have a haste turn on jabs. They're moving in. They have a stun follow up and with Tinka. the TP boots there is just nothing left. They are getting yep. clobbered. 800 from his Ags. This slow Ags build-up is kind of costing Cole. They've got this, this Chen who wants to farm and a Sand King who is not a Shaker. He needs a Blink Dagger. Shaker you can play with just Fissure. Sand King, at this point, early on you can play without the Blink, but we're kind of getting that to that stage where without a Blink Dagger, this Sand King is not able to initiate, is not able to counter-initiate, and Mineski are taking advantage of that. Well, they have caught themselves to Jakiro. This is a nice pickup here and <laughs> much needed. Mushi popped his ulti and then was like, oh, wait, no, this is, uh, yeah, this is not a play. Yeah, we're Ice 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 mid is like, that's a free tower, guys. Sure, I'll take this. And I, I think we got to talk at least a little bit about what's been going on with the silencer here. It's been a really rough oh, game for him so far. It, almost lowest on the net worth out of all the core heroes and almost being surpassed by the Chen as well. Yeah, here are you. At, at this point, it's kind of... Uh, hero that you just don't even realize is a core in this game. Uh, kind of forgotten even about him because he's not a hero that can make plays. Some mid heroes you get behind, you're like, well, my job is now to gank. Silencer's like, well, I can, I'm going to farm to catch up, but unlike the Tinker, you don't exactly farm fast or efficiently. So this Silencer is having a slow crawl up towards his Hurricane Pike and is going to be struggling to remain relevant as a carry. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, he's just willing the to move around. neutral sent home, but Ice 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 has been, well, typical Ice 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 things, just the biggest menace on the map. 4, 2, and 7. He is not just finding the kills and set up for his team, but also just constantly giving them vision, pressuring, and that's allowed the Tinker and the Svantaxi farm. Mineski have gone for a slightly greedier draft than some of their previous games, and it's paid off because of the Night Stalker play. When well, he had a, an Ags queued up, actually, on the Night Stalker, now instead deciding to go back for the BKB. Uh, oh, man, he's won Z-Freak. He's starting to dive Z-Freak <laughs> on the high ground by a Tier 3. He knows he's going to Tinker to back him up. And that this Z-Freak Chen really wants the Ags. Z-Freak was holding like just Brown Boots Midas. He had all his Ags parts in the in his uh, backpack. And I think he realized like, I need some help. Let's carry my Ogre Club. Yeah. No point leaving that thing in the in my backpack when I can benefit from this extra health. If anything, you should be holding the point booster with it just for that extra stats. Oh. And I mean, the fact that they're just hanging out here, Mushi, thinking oh about gosh. going in. Oh no, they're so close. He's just going to end up being dropped. Kyle's trying to rotate in. They want to find something in return for this, but can they actually get anything? Mu's going to get turned around upon. No they stuns. are TP and there's nothing to break it. And well, the stun onto three in return. Nana's going to TP into this as well. They just TP out another one. They don't have anything to break this. And well, there's going to be a rupture, oh, but. His TP's in his backpack. Don't worry, he has some time to think about it. Mm -hmm. And they don't have any way to get it. He is eventually going to be brought down by virtue of Mu. The ulti came out, but... Yep. Mu going bottom, looking for this kill. Ninja Boogie does not have any Tangos. Yeah, this is a big one, right? Again, like the couple of kills here being very important for complexity to gain yeah. some type of momentum. Anything is good yeah. at this point. Does finish buying his uh, four staff, though, so... 
Ninja Boogie achieves what he set out to at the bottom lane. Farm up his first item. Does give up a kill, but that's a kill that's not going to translate to much for Cole. Oh, very... It's just so annoying when you're, you're Chen's trying to get this Axe, and that's when you, your lineup really comes online, and he's getting killed time and time again. This is going to be one of Z-Freak's slowest Axe timing on the hero, as far as complexity are concerned. Normally, they're used to seeing this item around that, like, 18 to 20 minute mark. I think... Maneski have realized, they, they realized this in early games, Zefric is the one often farming alone, you can pick him off. They did it on the Wyvern, they lost that game eventually, but they killed him so many times because he's always somewhat vulnerable. Well, it's only a thousand gold lead right now, it's 17 to 13. Do you feel like that's pretty indicative of the way that this is going? It's, I think right now, a bit more Maneski favored. The Sven Tinker have not been pressured or shut down enough. Cole, though, still plenty of ways to win this game. They're going to get double BKB soon on Bloodseeker and Nature's Prophet. Rupture against the Sven, always great. The key thing for Mushi coming up in these fights is making sure he initiates on someone before he gets ruptured. If he gets ruptured, he's got to just stand there, can't do anything. If he blinks onto Prophet, Chen, Bloodseeker, whoever, with God Strength on, he'll kill that hero. Then he gets ruptured, that's fine. You've already killed a hero, you get ruptured, you just stay alive, uh, and you've already secured your team a one fight because your Tinker can do a lot of work. So uh, the fights for Cole really come down to making sure this Sven doesn't just insta-delete one hero. Well, let's see how they're able to make that happen, if they're going to be able to make that happen. and They've got the Silencer too. If, yeah. You know, you, you control the Sven with the with the Rupture, and you can stop the Tinker from doing damage with that Global Silence. So, until Tinker gets a BKB, which probably comes much later, Aether lands maybe BKB after that, could still consider getting the, the Sheep before the BKB, or uh, even something like a Shiva's Guard. Mm -hmm. Here go Maneski though, with BKB. They Looks like they've won the race of the BKB. Bloodseeker about 600 away, Nature's Prophet about 1,000 away, so the first BKB on the map is Mushi. Oh, there's the roll in. They want to find Z-Freak. He did just get his Aghanim Scepter, but that's not going to keep him alive. And actually, the mud, the Golem is getting uh, rooted there as well by the other Ancients. <laughs> I was like, does Mushi want to chase after that one? Try and delete it. Looks like it will get, get free. Yeah. Aether Lens, like you said, completed as well. And Maneski now in a position where they can think about pushing for more as Mushi looking to find Mu and actually he's going to see him here on the low ground. Ends up just getting caught out of position and he's dead as well. So two now down and this could be uh, another objective going their favor. Yep. They get the high ground ward too above the tier three tower. May not, we'll see if they can even get this tier two. That may not be possible right now with, uh, oh, Chen respawning. That's not really a dangerous here. Yeah, they could go for this with the liquid fire. And then they're well set up for that high ground push or pick off with that Observer Ward. Ninja Boogie's four stuff, very useful to kite around things like the Bloodseeker Silence. And yeah, for Cole, they desperately need Sand King's Blink. They've been needing it for a while. It, it's one of those things you, can, you can't even really say, let's just prioritize it because you need to also prioritize the Ags on Chen. The Chen, when you go for this Ags build, you can't just suddenly say, oh, I'll give farm to my teammates. If you're going for like a normal like Arcane's yeah. mech, four stuff, sure, you, you play that five position, but the, the Midas Ags needs to keep farming. Well, There's no hero that could, uh, a hero that could just stop farming is the Silencer, but that's, that's limp. You don't want your mid player to not be farming. Well, now that they have it, like, what are what's going to be sort of the goal for complexity here? Is it group up together and then come in with NP afterwards? It's uh, yeah, smoke up is four. Nature's Prophet push push one lane. Smoke up is four. Bloodseeker's BKB as well. Um, and then go for a, go for a gank. Get Carl to try and find a good initiation, and turn a pickoff into a push. You can't just try and brute force five men down a lane with the Chen Ags because Tinker pushes out lanes effectively. You've got Macropire, Jakiro clears waves. Uh, the, the five man brute force does not work, but pickoffs has, and that's where you need the pickoffs. And to do that, you've got to get this this blink dagger, smoke up with the with the rest of your team other than profit, and see what you can do. All right, there it is, blink dagger done, macro pyre down as well. Maneski keeping all of the lanes pushed out simultaneously. Oh yeah, Lincoln's on Mushi. He wants to block block those ruptures as far as things to cancel. Also blocks Barra strike. Yeah. Talk about the one stun, the one initiation. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh no, they they don't have easy spells to break Lincoln's with. Like casting a sprout, Nature's Prophet off. He's not going to be there if you're trying to smoke gank him. Prophet's the one teeping in later. Last word is like okay, it's a very long range spell, but 
Oh, the smoke. It oh, will be scouted Tinka. out. Is he, yeah, oh, they are. That was really well done. They, they actually hit on the scan, and so they knew that they were right there. And Nana, what a player. Yeah, baits in everything. Bar strike on the creep confirms his suspicion. Well, the wraparound here, though, they don't have Tinker for the Rishi moment. ultimate. Okay, an opening as they run by him and looking for that BKB already out from Chessie. The rupture is up there, trying to get themselves out of there. Global does come down now, and they're able to take down one. Ninja Boogie already dead, and Mushi just going to TP away, yeah. as well as everybody else. They Tink still have that answer. Yeah, Tinker arrives, but the call has already been made when Tinker arrives. Like, let's just, let's just ditch this fight. They use Global for this. We're fine with that. Sven does use BKB, but at the same time, Bloodseeker um, also did. So both carries using their 10-second uh, BKBs. That does slightly favor Cole, since Sven is going to be more reliant on his than... Well, I'd say they're equally, actually. Yeah. Jesse really needs his against Tinker. Sven really needs his um, against, like, what? I mean, he doesn't really need it against Sankin with Lincolns. He needs it more so uh, just to make sure he can kind of get his damage output out during God Strength when he blinks in. Doesn't get kited too badly, so... All in all, Mineski, if they can turn this global cooldown into objectives or a fight, they're going to be looking very good. Maybe even a Roshan. Yeah. Without global, yeah, this could just be a free Rosh for them. Well, and the other thing, too, is they've got the Night Stalker Ags now, all the vision in the world. I think that that sentry is going to miss the uh, ward that was down, but nonetheless, this is looking like they're going to be able to build on this 4,000 net worth lead, and Complexity kind of just stuck inside here. It's just so hard to really have an understanding of what's going on around the map with that Night Stalker Darkness. Yeah, they, they pop it now to secure Roche. Cole could guess what's going on, but they are going to lose the vision game. They're in a... They have no global. This is, yeah, impossible to contest. Mushi with Aegis now. Very, very dangerous Sven to deal with, and also a dangerous Tinker. They did not draft to really counter the Tinker. The Silencer is fairly useful, but it's not a hero that's going to allow you to kill the Tinker. It may just negate some of his damage up in the fight if he has to wait for the Global to wear off. And he's also got 3.8k gold. He could buy a BKB now if he wants to. Yeah. He also has a regen rune, so if a battle does start breaking out here, this could be Rocket Laser City. Yeah. And doesn't look like he's going to go for the BKB. I don't I kind of don't feel he needs it until much like maybe as like a last type item, fifth or sixth item. Okay. As a shivers queued up, we'll see if that's going to be the the purchase or not. Uh, Complexity doing a really good job of making sure that they're keeping this bottom lane pushed out. Mineski uh, not able to basically get whatever they want, and then they TP before they lose anybody. Yeah, Cola Col playing this well. They're kind of avoiding the fights while Global's down, and now Global's back up. We'll see what they look to do. Problem is, while Global's down, Mineski got an objective. They got Roshan, so even though you have Global back, if you want to find Mineski, you've got to get a really good initiation off. You can fight into the Aegis. Uh, if Mushi like uses his God Strength BKB and you kite around him, he does no damage. It doesn't matter if he's got an Aegis because he's not doing damage when he respawns. The one thing we are kind of seeing, if you look at the net worth graph, is basically it's the Tinker, it's the Sven, and then a very large drop off. Like Night Stalker, he's a core, but it's not to the same extent. If they're able to get a decent rupture off, how do you feel about Complexity's chances? It's pretty good. Um, the problem is right now Sven has the two lives, so if you rupture him, he may just save his BKB and God Strength for his second life. Um, but once his Aegis expires, it'll be an even playing field in some ways. A 4k gold lead, uh, if Mineski don't have Aegis, is not really a, a big advantage for them. The big problem for Cole is is still going to be the vision. Night Stalker going for this Ags gem build is going to control the entire map. He's going to deward stuff. He's going to make it very difficult for Sand King to initiate. You may have a Blink Dagger. Well, now you get spotted from outside that Blink Dagger range because of this Ags. So anytime it's nighttime, Cole can't, fi can't fight. Cole have to fight during daytime with Global and not against Aegis. If they can fulfill those three criteria, I would say they, they, they have an edge in a team fight, but that's obviously three criteria that's they have to fill. To you know? <laughs> yeah, Aegis is expiring, <laughs> nighttime eventually ends, Global's up. So, you know, it, it, it will happen. There will be moments where it happens. The problem is what happens afterwards. How, how convincingly do you win that team fight? Do you turn that team fight into objectives if you do win it? Uh, and that's where Mineski, every time Global's used, have ran at Cole or taken Roshan or always made sure they achieved something. And, and now they've got even more avenues to continue to take the fight. Like the Earth Spear, he picks up the Blink Dagger so he can help to be that first person to set up for the Sven and maybe afterwards wait for a big jump in from Mushi that blows them all to hell. But 
going to be again. Nana pushing out these lanes, and he just, he's been able to do whatever he wants. Like, he had five deaths at somewhere around the 15 minute mark. He hasn't died again since then. Yep. It's been a strong Tinker game from him, and just done what he needs to do to make sure he gets farm and items because, yeah, late game here is going to be very difficult to deal with. He's almost hoping this Blood... He almost wants to fight just so that Bloodseeker's BKB can get, like, churned away at it and get down to five seconds, because that's where this Bloodseeker will really struggle in the late game, when he has a five-second BKB. You see that? Ninja Boogie just, like, runs in and throws out one Liquid Fire, <laughs> takes down the tower and runs away. Um, Fun times. Here is such... It's one of those five positions that is a lot more enjoyable to play because you get to farm. Yeah. It's like your job to push out lanes as a Jakiro, and all of a sudden you get to drop Macropire and Creep Waves. He's got 100 last hits. That's, that's the dream as a support. I love it. Oh, they, they see Chessy with the ward. They're running for him. Tinker is there as well. He's going to be able to join them oh, after no. the fact. Chessy is in a ton of trouble. Gets the BKB off and going to be able to TP away. They, they don't have enough damage. That was needed. Yeah, they didn't initiate with a stun. They allowed him to get the BKB up. The Earth Spirit blinked in, and then uh, I'm not sure he, did, he didn't instantly drop a rock to Boulder Smash uh, to yeah to, to use the Boulder Smash. Mm -hmm. Perhaps should have gone for a long range one, or let I think the easiest thing is to let the Sven initiate there. Yeah, that was definitely a a fumble to play from Mineski. They had the vision, they knew he was going for the rune, and they still don't get the kill. And I mean, if you blow him up right there, force a buyback at this point in the game, yeah, that would that's... be tremendous. That would have been a big kill, and I'm sure Mineski, that's one of those mistakes I'll look back on and be like, yeah, that, that should have been a kill. Only way it's not a kill is should be if he has godlike reflexes and, like, BKB dodges the Sven stun when he blinks in. But if you blink right on top of him in melee range, yeah, 99% of the time you'll get that stun. Well, Mineski still containing complexity to their base, but now hey, with the Aegis expiring... It's, Aegis expiring? It's daytime? 40 seconds of daytime. All right, let's see if they can do it. It's a very small window, but it's a window. It is. And they're moving towards where Mushi is. Complexity, can they find this opening? Chessy is there as well, but not everybody in the area. Nana is just now TPing out. This would be such a good moment for them if they can They've actually find ward. the initiation. They see them. There's the opening epicenter out as well. They got the blood right already. No, it doesn't hit on anybody. They only found the Earth Spirit. As they're not going to be able to do it. They are able to disjoint the stun for a moment, though, and the rupture Mushi is already out on the yeah. Mushi. Can they make this work? There's going to be the jump charge as well. They're trying to run away. Ice Path is down down as one as well. BKB out from Chessy. Global is there as well. They're going to be able to turn now. Mushi trying to do whatever he can. He's going to be rude to the spot. Starting to get ran down. Can they find the kill? Oh my god, the turnaround! That just blows them the hell up! Oh my god! Mushi's composure. He's like, uh, he just takes his hand off the keyboard. He's like, I'm ruptured, guys. It's fine. <laughs> just, I don't need to use my hands for this six to eight seconds. He just stood there on hold position. He waited for the latest possible moment to BKB, and that was the deciding factor. Sanking could, he, he thought he could go in and get a Barra Strike off, but Mushi's BKB lasted long enough that he actually survived his way through it. So many Sven players there would have panicked while ruptured, seen the heroes running in, being like, I gotta pop my BKB. No, Mushi says, I'm gonna wait for the last possible second to BKB, and he turns that one around, and what a play coming out from him. 13k plus gold lead, racks to be claimed, global down, nighttime. Maneski just blow this game wide open with a fantastic Sven play. Well, and Nana, they just had so much damage, like, out of nowhere. It felt like they blew oh, them up. Oh, man, yeah, he, <sighs> he crushed them, that fight. Wow, well, Mushi... A quick little blink away, make sure that he keeps on hitting those barracks. Just it, like that, it was lining up. Everything was like what complexity yeah. wanted, the perfect fight, and it just didn't happen. They have God Strength again too, Gabe. This is really dangerous spot for Cole. No global silence for 40 seconds. Mineski's actually waiting and hoping to get a pick here. They're not showing themselves. They're saying, come on, guys, who's there? There's Kyle. All right, easy kill. That's a big one. That's one oh, to take. And Jesse. Rock hits Chessy as well. The silence onto him. Can they follow it up with any more? He's already down to about a third HP. Gets Test of Faith back. And well, surprised they're not going for this one. They're going to play it safe. Are they going <laughs> to? Again, <laughs> they fake back once. They're going to fake back twice. Oh, Mushi jumps forward. He finds Limp. That's going to be a stun. He gets ruptured, but he's already where he wants to be. Underneath the Tier 4 towers and beat the hell out of Limp. Chessy now also almost able to bring down that Earth Spirit. He's moving pretty fast. Mushi's still getting hit by the tower, but Nana's the one dealing the damage. Ice 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 with the control. Maneski taking it all. 
as they're able to run away. Moo just wants to find his kill somehow, some way, but it ain't happening. They take him down as well. No buybacks. Chen is the only one alive, and the barracks is down. They've got a Sankey with Epicenter, but that does not feel like enough. Not when Night Stalker has the Ags. You can't get the clean initiation off. Cole have just not had the vision they need in these fights, and they, they're one big play. The daytime smoke with Aegis expiring just did not get them the results they needed, and they're going to get picked apart by their base. This is looking all over for complexity. You can hear Mineski in they're the background. In the they're feeling good. They don't give a damn. Ice, 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 taking everything. He's going to get kicked <laughs> away, but still going to end up picking up that gem and running away. I mean, he'll probably just say he dropped that gem on purpose, you know. <laughs> ice, 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 putting a ton of pressure on, but definitely all signs for me pointing to Mushi as the big player this game. He dominated the game on this fan. For a hero known to struggle against Bloodseeker, he made it look easy. Mega creeps and complexity are back against the wall. Yeah, and they want to end it right now. They've had enough. They're going to jump forward. The global comes out, but already they've got the answer. Z Freak is dead again. Tier 4 tower is the only thing left standing. And Maneski getting what they want. The blink away as the silence came out. They blink again. Oh, they no. kick their buddy out of there. Maneski are not losing anybody here. Yeah. Cole will play it out. They've. I think I said that's we saying, like, oh, I guess I shouldn't have died the fountain. But oh, Chessie didn't get the BKB off. Stunned to follow. Chessie's gone. They move BKB is there as well, but Nana not really afraid. The epicenter comes out. They got the BKB on the Tinker as well. He's Chessie actually getting out. a right click fight as well. And nothing to break it. Kyle still looking for an opening. Mushi, he finds the stun. They find the kill. Kyle gonna be brought down. Complexity. Losing right there. They've played well, but GG finally call Maneski are gonna be in the grand finals. Cole calling GG's well played and good luck for that. I think Cole have to be happy with their performance in the tournament. They played some really good Dota. They are the ones kind of setting somewhat of a new meta for at least a lot of the teams in this tournament, but this is the best Mineski have played by far. Uh, the Mineski we saw in the group stage was shaky. They got through. They were in the easier group. I think most people would admit that. But they definitely showed that they are deserving to be in this playoff, deserving to be in this grand finals with such a well-played best of three here. Cole